first time I met him, I walked in the shop and he had just finished a brand new guitar, a big blonde in New Yorker. It was really unbelievable. I never saw anything like that. He says, you want to try it? He said, no, just be careful. I sat down on the stool and he put it in my hand. I played a couple of chords on it. I couldn't believe the sound of it. One Saturday, he says, geez, I could come here every day. He says, oh, no, you can't. Because he was in a bad mood that particular day. That's the kind of person he was. So I was, oh, okay, anything you say, you know, he must have liked me because I, I never come on smart or wise guy or, or anything like that. So I guess he finally here decided, I guess we'll try him. As a teacher, you know, he'd show you something and he'd say, this is how I do it. You can do it either my way or your own way, but it better come out as good or better than I do it. I guess I'm molded actually the way he wanted me to be. As I'm carving it, I'm actually taking weight off a piece of wood, and the piece of wood is changing its sound, it's getting mellower. I can tell how it's ringing by uh, the vibration I'm feeling in my fingers. The bracings are made from spruce, the same as the top is. They have to fit perfectly. In other words, the same contours that the top has, the highs, the lows, the shallow points and everything, that brace has to fit with no spacing at all. Because if you glue it in and there's even a hairline opening, it could cause a vibration that could drive you out of your mind. So that's why the brace has to be solid, like one piece. So if you hit the note, the brace carries the sound to all four corners of the instrument. I use a cross brace, like an open scissor. When you open the brace up, it gives you a slower vibration. As you tighten the brace up, the vibrations are faster, so it gives you a brighter type of sound. My great-grandfather, he was a cabinet maker. My grandfather was a custom tailor. And my mother... She was a designer, mostly handcraft things. My father was a tool and die maker, so every place I went, I was using my hands. Physically, mentally, I get stronger into what I'm doing, and I like that. If I had to sit there and think, if I had to figure out the equation for energy and all that, I could never do that. My mind just doesn't work that way. But the more physical and direct it is, the better I can work at it. That's the way I create that way, physically. Small, you know, there was always music around. My grandfather with the operas, my uncles all played mandolin and violin and accordion, and it'd be like oh, 15, 20 people in the house all the time. Every weekend was like a big feast. I was always interested in the music. <laughs> Gradually, I was more interested in the guitar. This friend of mine wanted to play together. He told me about the D'Angelico. I would like to see where they make the best guitars in the world. Oh, yeah, it was a great time of life when we were in the world. And I was going to see if it was playing John Smith, playing the whole West Paul, all the top players. I mean, they come into the Angelicos, and I would be there. In 1959, I was doing a lot of the heavy work, and John was doing all the fine things. He was much older. You know, he did all the carving and putting the 